Any? Emily, tell us when we're live. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh. Hey, Emily, let us know when we're live. I think you're good. Already? Well, hold on, let me. I'm still getting the. Please stand by on our webcast, on our training okay. blog, so. <laughs> Go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in at the New England Aquarium. Uh, we are really excited to introduce you to our newest addition to the Marine Mammal Department. My name is Patty. I'm one of the trainers here. And in the background, you can hear our newest addition. So we're going to go right to it so you can see her. She was born uh, just two weeks ago on August 6th, and her mom is with her right there, Ursula. And they're busy nursing, which is something that's really important for northern fur seal pups. Currently, uh, this baby girl weighs in at about 13.8 pounds. She was probably about 8 pounds at the time of her birth, and so she's consistently gaining weight over the course of two weeks, if you can imagine that she's already gained 5 pounds. And that noise that you hear from her is really important. It's communication between the mother and the pup, and it's the way a mother would identify her pup in the wild. So by making that loud sound, she's letting her mom know that she's ready to eat, and she's asking her, to kind of get in position. So this is our beautiful little girl. You can see her tiny little flippers. And eventually she'll grow just as big as her mom. Her mom currently is about uh, 95 pounds. And again, Ursula is her mom. Isaac is her dad. And she was born right here. She's our second pup that we've had at the New England Aquarium. So as she's feeding, I'm going to go into a little bit about uh, where northern fur seals are found so you can find out some more information about that. Uh, these animals are normally found off the coast of Alaska, so uh, way far off, about 400 miles, there's a set of islands called the Pribilofs. There's St. Paul and St. George Island. And on St. Paul Island, I actually had the opportunity to go see her out in the wild, or rather, uh, wild counterparts of hers. And that's actually how we picked her name. So we went through a host of different names, all referring to different areas that you might see these animals, different islands where they were um, breeding. And we actually chose the name Kitovi. So we spell it K-I-T-O-V-I, and we'll call her uh, Kit for short. And as you hear her in the background, uh, Kitovi is actually one of the rookeries or breeding locations on St. Paul Island. So if you look at the map of St. Paul, you'll see all those highlighted locations. And those are actually all different sites where fur seals breed. Um, this animal is a pretty cool species because it only breeds in very select locations where there's a lot of fish content. So St. Paul and St. George happen to be two of those locations. And in the wild, the locations where they live are really rocky. They're really uneven terrain. Um, these animals are well adapted for that by walking on all four flippers. So um, in just a few minutes, we're probably going to see if Ursula wants to have some food for herself. Right now, she's busy providing milk for her baby, but we're going to see if, um, if she wants to have any food herself. In the wild, they'll eat herring, capelin, squid, a variety of other fishes. Um, but when they come on land, as you can see in the photo, uh, it's really rocky. And enables them to come away from the ocean, get a little bit more protected from any predators like sharks or killer whales that they might encounter, and also find a good breeding spot. So in, <laughs> in terms of breeding locations, um, these animals will usually pick a location that they were born in most commonly. Um, the next photo that you'll see actually has some purple circles on it, and in those circles you'll see little yellow dots, and those are actually flipper tags that females have on them, and that's a study that's being done on St. Paul to find out uh, fidelity of females or whether or not they're returning to the same location year after year. In the far upper left-hand corner you'll also see a really large male, and that's uh, the size difference that you can see between males and females. So size is really important for the males. The larger a male, the more inclined he will be to have breeding partners. And so all those females are actually part of one um, male breeding harem. If you look a little closer at the next photo, you'll see a whole bunch of really cute little babies. They are all born uh, about the same time of year. And so our baby girl, born August 6th, with those little bit on um, the outside of their typical season. So they're usually born 
uh, throughout the month of July here at the New England Aquarium, obviously, they don't have to worry about the fact that they need to leave at a certain time to go out and find food. So it worked out really well for us here. Um, any time of year they want to have a baby, we're more than happy to have them here, obviously. But out in the wild, the pups are all left in a group. So that photo is a whole bunch of little pups all sleeping on the rocks with two females in the background and then a male guarding his territory and his protecting his females all at the same time. So when females have to leave to go to sea to find food, they'll leave their pups, they'll go out for as much as even nine days in one study found, um, come back and feed their pup. Because it takes so much energy, um, they only have one pup a year, so Katovi uh, will be o Ursula's only pup. Twins is very, very rare for a fur seal. And if you look at the next picture, you'll actually see um, just the massive size difference between a male and a female. So on the far left is, is a big, tall male, uh, which is similar to the size of Isaac, our adult male. And on the right-hand side are the females. And really early on, when they're young pups, you'll start to see the size differences. So um, Katovi at 13.8 pounds, won't gain weight nearly as rapidly as a male. So um, it's something that's really interesting to see in these babies, because we did have a male pup last year. So um, we're going to just hold on one second, see if um, er Jenny's going to feed Ursula and bring her back out on exhibit. And we're going to talk a little bit more about um, these guys and also um, the relations that they have with their wild counterparts and how important Ursula, Katovi, and the rest of our fur seals are. Um, there's only three institutions right now in the entire United States that have northern fur seals. We are lucky enough to be one of them, and we actually now have uh, seven northern fur seals. There's only 12 uh, around the U.S. We also are partners with Mystic Aquarium in Connecticut and the Seattle Aquarium in Seattle, Washington, who also have fur seal groups. And so we're thrilled to be able to add to that um, group of animals. Out in the wild, there's approximately 600,000 northern fur seals in the U.S. And um, if you look at the next couple of pictures, you'll see just how awesome they are out there. But it's really a unique opportunity to be able to see fur seals in the wild because they are protected. Uh, the islands that they live on, you're not allowed to walk in those locations during breeding season. All these fur seals as many as 600,000 will ref return to only two islands. And so that's a lot of animals in a very small amount of space, which they're very comfortable with, but we obviously don't want humans to interrupt them. So that's why it's so great to be able to come to the New England Aquarium, see northern fur seals here, and get a better understanding of what we can do for them out in the wild. Um, there's a really great photo coming up. Uh, if you want to skip ahead a couple of pictures of uh, a kayak with northern fur seals all around and it's, it was actually a really neat opportunity to be out there in the wild with them. Uh, they typically are found off the coast of Alaska on those islands but when they're not out there they do swim quite frequently in the Bering Sea. So um, these animals are well adapted for that. They swim with their hind flippers. They have the ability to stay out in the open ocean for as much as nine months and so that photo is just a really cool thing to see just how curious these animals are and also what a great experience it is to contribute to research that the northern fur seal groups are doing. So to tell you a little bit about their family, now that you're watching uh, Katovi nursing with Ursula, Katovi is actually the second pup born here at the New England Aquarium. Uh, her brother Flaherty was born here last year in July and now he is actually weighing in at about 50 pounds. So in one year he's as big as some of the small females that might be out in the wild. Um, the sexual dimorphism is what we talk about when we talk about size difference between a male and a female. And so Cordova, Ursula, Roxy, our adult females, they max out at about 115 to 120 pounds, whereas male fur seals can peak at up to 600 pounds. So um, Flaherty, our one-year-old, he's got a lot of growing to do still, and he'll eventually get just as big as Isaac, his dad. Um, if you look at the next photo, you'll see a little comparison of how Flaherty looked compared to Cortovi. Cor okay, I'm actually going to not talk for a quick minute, just in case she wants to talk. Oh, it looks like it's grooming time. So just real quick, I didn't really talk much about this behavior. Grooming is a uh, really important part of a fur seal's day. The thing that sets northern fur seal apart from a sea lion is the fact that they actually use blubber to stay warm. And so for northern fur seals, their fur throughout the course of the day. And so we're going to actually see if um, they want to go out. And so you can get a little bit of a better view of Katovi back here. And Ursula's going to go out and hang out with the group. 
uh, Katobi is two weeks old, she has the option to go out and hang out with the rest of the fur seals. Katobi will stay back here behind the scenes and start to learn to swim. So another unique feature of fur seals is the fact that they don't swim until they're about a month old. And so we're starting in the transition right now of teaching her how to swim. So we put really uh, shallow water in pools and we see if she's interested in getting in. So she's starting to kind of play around with the pool check it out. Um, we have a variety of different water areas set up for her and by the time she <laughs> by the time she is a month old she'll probably start swimming so she'll get into the deeper water that we have for her. Uh, in the wild these animals will transition by kind of staying along the beach areas and getting used to the tide coming in and out, playing around in the water and literally getting their flippers wet. So she's going to cruise into this pool and you might see her trying to swim around in it a little bit. She's really brave. At two weeks old she's pretty young for a swimmer but she's just super curious about it so we have allowed her to do that with some restrictions. We don't want to put the water up too high for her. Her newest thing is she's starting to learn to float and so that's her latest challenge. Hey Patty, this is Emily and I have some questions that are coming in through sure. uh, Google Plus and Hangout and Twitter and everything. We had um, someone who wanted to know when the fur seal pup will be on exhibit. The fur seal pup, we don't have a set date for that yet. She probably will get out on exhibit once she's able to eat fish on her own. That's usually at about four to five months of age. So for Flaherty, uh, we didn't introduce him until he was five months old. And what we did is slowly introduced him to all of the animals. Um, she's already met her younger brother, or her older brother rather, Flaherty. Um, and she'll probably start meeting animals. This is our behind the scenes area that you're seeing right now. So we'll probably start slowing to introduce her to animals through um, the different panels. And then once she's confidently eating fish on her own, then we'll bring her out onto the main exhibit. Any other questions? Well, we've had one that I'm sure everyone is asking right now and okay. how do you deal with that much cute? How do you go to work with something that's just so adorable? It's very hard to deal with that much cute. If you guys want to show a couple, like the next picture of Flaherty, you can see uh, what he looked like when he was a baby. Super, super cute. I mean it's really hard to do your work and remember that you have to go cut some fish, scrub some buckets and feed some other animals because she's just really awesome. She's actually pretty comfortable around people which has been a big help. Um, we don't want to interrupt obviously the mother pup bond but we do want to be able to interact with her to help her out if she's deciding to swim and just so that she's comfortable around trainers is obviously something that's super important for animals here at New England Aquarium. Um, in terms of the rest of her family, eventually she will meet uh, the next big guy in our group which is Isaac. So if you want to show a great handsome photo of him, Isaac is 13 years old and he weighs in at about um, 450 pounds. He'll eventually be as much as 600 pounds. So when he gets that big, um, actually looking at it right now is her mom Ursula. She's hanging out on some ice cooling off in the summertime. But this is Isaac and the difference in size is just massive between the males and the females. So he's currently our breeding male and he has the opportunity to breed with all of our females. So he's the father of both um, Katobi who's thinking about getting in the water and Flaherty her older brother. So obviously this is kind of a daunting thing for a new in this water space that they're not incredibly comfortable with at a young age. So that's why we keep the water a little bit lower. Uh, we give her the chance to check it out in a comfortable setting so that she'll be confident that she can have her flippers on the ground and she'll be okay. And we don't op ask her to go in if she wants to go in. That's totally up to her. But obviously she's pretty cute grooming with her flippers. One thing we noticed with her that was a little different from her brother Flaherty was her ability to use those flippers. When they're born sometimes their flippers are still curled a little bit and they're obviously so long that they can kind of trip around as they're starting to walk. But she was really good right out of the womb at walking around. So what she's doing right now is utilizing her nails which are about halfway down her flipper to groom her and she's actually losing a little bit of fur um, all the time. She'll get a brand when she's about four to five months of age but she's got a little bit of fur coming off of her on a regular basis and now that she's kind of fluffed up you might see as she moves around that she's actually got a peach layer underneath that dark hair. Um, the peach layer is called under fur. The layer on top uh, is made up of guard hairs and those two layers combined are what keep them really warm. So if you have any questions at any point go ahead and interject. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in. We have people on Twitter uh, Kara on Twitter and Brad on Google Plus wants to know, and you touched on this a little bit, uh, when do they start eating fish instead of nursing? 
actually um, stop feeding them about four months of age and the mother will actually go out to see sometimes before the pup and then the pup will start figuring out um, how to fend for themselves out in the ocean. In that time they are taking the opportunity in the ocean to look for fish so they'll play right in the tides and they'll swim out a little bit and get braver and maybe look for some fish but it's not really until they're about four to five months of age that mom will stop feeding them or nursing them and that the baby will be on their own trying to find food. Um, for that reason, that's why St. Paul and St. George are actually such great breeding islands because they're uh, areas of high fish productivity. So what we found lately in terms of their population is that they are on a decline of 4 to 5 percent and some theories on that um, are that it might be due to overfishing or even climate change. So as the ocean currents change, they pull fish a little bit further away from the islands and that then makes it a little more difficult and less energy efficient for the moms to find fish and then bring it back for the pups. That uh, segues to another question we're getting on Google Plus from our friends at Zoo Atlanta. Um, they wanted to talk a little bit about the conservation work that's being done for the northern fur seals right now. Yeah, right now uh, we go out, I shouldn't say we, um, the National Marine Fisheries Service goes out every year in August to take a look at the status of the females on the islands and then on the second year um, they'll go out and do a population count on the pups to find out how they're doing and so what we found is that you know they are decreasing at about four or five percent right now their population is fairly good at about 600,000 animals um, but it's too soon to say what exactly it is that is affecting their um, their population decline. So the best thing that we can do for them is just spread the word that we can make good choices about the seafood that we eat. You can find out more about that on our website at neaq.org and if we're making really good conscious decisions about the seafood that we're eating, hopefully we won't be taking the same food sources that they're looking for and that might help contribute um, to stopping this population decline. The other thing that's really important about the conservation effort is the fact that those islands are protected. So all during breeding season, unless you're a researcher or a volunteer as part of the research, you're not allowed to go out on those breeding islands. And that's a really important thing because these animals would be startled if a person showed up. They might be inclined to leave the island or abandon their pups and we don't want that situation to happen. Uh, we had another question from uh, Twitter and it uh, was about Ursula. Is she very territorial or not towards the trainer uh, when her pup is around? Ursula has actually been absolutely amazing about letting us be near the pup. Um, she was born uh, around 11.30 at night on a Tuesday night so we came in at midnight to see the baby and Katovi was just hanging out with Ursula and Ursula was really amazing about letting us be around the baby hasn't been defensive at all around trainers but we obviously give her her space we're not going to go in and try and handle the pup around her we're not going to go and try and you know do anything that would be uncomfortable for Ursula but the fact that she's that helpful and that great about letting us interact with the pup is great for future training with her and real quick before we go to the next um, question I just wanted to look at a couple more pictures of Isaac because Isaac is obviously the reason why we have this baby girl and we just want to thank uh, Seattle Aquarium for being great about letting us have him because the fact that we're able to have this breeding consortium with Mystic Aquarium and Seattle Aquarium is the reason why we're having uh, an increase in northern fur seals in different zoos and aquariums. Without Isaac we wouldn't have Kitovi and we wouldn't have Flaherty so it was really great that they sent him to us. Any other questions? Someone uh, asked earlier, uh, how fast do, do they grow? I mean, the, you talked about the size differential between the males and females, and, you know, Katobi's just so small. Um, how long does it take for the females and the males to get to be their full size? Female and male fur seals actually tend not to reach full size until towards the end of their lifespan. So um, Roxy right now has pretty much leveled off, but it's usually when they're reaching their late teens or early 20s that a female has reached her maximum size. Um, for that reason, the younger animals, the younger females, tend to come up on the breeding islands a little bit earlier, but they're not able to necessarily breed at that young age because it, they're not um, able to consume enough energy to raise pups. Um, for the male fur seals, 
it's similar in that um, once you reach a certain size, a male is obviously a little more beneficial than uh, a smaller male. So that's how that big size difference has come up in the wild. Uh, females would select for larger males, and over time that resulted in a big size difference. But Isaac right now, being 450 pounds at 13 years old, uh, is bigger this year than he was last year and than he was the year before. So we think that he will continue to keep getting larger as he gets older. Um, but the size difference between babies is pretty amazing because Katobi's gaining obviously a lot of weight at 13 pounds. Once she starts eating food on her own, she might level off a little bit more. Now she has the option of eating whenever she wants. It's like a drive through Ursula's here. If she wants food, she's there for her. So um, that's part of the reason why she gains weight so early. It's also really important for pups to do that because when they do separate at that four or five month age range, it takes them a little time to get their flippers under them, if you will, and learn how to find fish. Um, but our two-year-old male, Lou, he already weighs 70 pounds. And that's what a full-grown female could weigh. So at two years old, he's going to wrap it a lot larger than all of our females. Uh, a friend on Facebook, Courtney, wants to know how much the seals eat in a, a typical feeding. And it's probably very different depending on the size of the animal. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah, it definitely varies. They uh, squid, herring, and capelin. Right now, Isaac is eating the most. He eats close to 10,000 calories a day, which is about 20 pounds of fish. Um, but at his peak, he'll eat up to 30 pounds of fish. So depending on the time of year, um, they'll eat more. Usually right before they go into breeding season, males and females will eat a lot more. For the males, they bulk up on blubber, and that way during breeding, they'll leave their territories to go find food. Um, for the females, they tend to do that so they're prepared for when they have their pup. And if you guys are watching Katovi, you can see that she's just kind of checking out what's going on in the water. She's not so inclined to get in quite yet, but she's really curious about what's happening in there. So probably um, within the next week or two, she'll be all the way in the pool and swimming like the rest of our adults do. And we'll uh, probably post that as soon as it happens so that you guys can see her swimming around and all of these great stages of um, babyhood as she starts growing up. Question on uh, Google Plus, uh, wondering about whether Kit will stay at the aquarium for her entire life. Um, we don't know for sure if Kit will stay here or if she'll move to a different facility. It really is in the best interest of our animals to have an open plan for breeding. So if it's necessary for Kit to move. To <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're back. <laughs> okay, hi. <laughs> so I was just um, watching her a little bit, and I don't know if I can get the video right on her, but she's actually blowing bubbles underwater sometimes, just checking everything out under there. So. into some technical difficulties right now with those um, with the connection behind the scenes. 
Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for sharing your pictures or sharing your questions with us. Um, whatever we don't get to with Patty this afternoon, we will be sure to cover in a future blog post. And the trainer's blog, um, for all these questions, as well as for updates on kids growing up. We know we'll have lots of pictures behind the scenes of her uh, and videos. And so um, please follow us on the trainer's blog. And that uh, address is trainers.neaq.org. So http colon slash slash trainers.neaq.org. And we also are always putting up pictures of Kit and uh, the other seals, harbor seals and fur seals and sea lions, as well as all the other animals we have at the aquarium on our social networks. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and Tumblr. And we have an Instagram uh, page where we've got a lot of great pictures of uh, Kit going up, as well as um, you know, just follow along, and we'll, we'll post little Vine videos here and there. So um, keep sending those questions. and you know. Unfortunately, we do have some technical difficulties, but um, we'll be sure to wrap those uh, questions into future blog posts. Um, in the past, we've uh, announced special things on the, the trainer's blog, such as it's a girl. Um, when Kit was born, we wanted to give, the trainers wanted to give Ursula some space and some time to bond with uh, Kitova. And so it took a couple days for them to kind of develop that trust and get close enough to determine whether Kit was, in fact, a girl. Um, and so we announced that on our blogs and we shared it with the media up here in Boston. And um, so we, uh, we hope that you will follow us on, on the blogs and be part of those announcements. Um, it was great to be able to share her name with you guys today. And Patty went into uh, background about Kitova and the, the significance of that name. And they'll, they'll be calling her Kit, um, which we think is just, just adorable. And we're so glad that we were able to introduce her to, to you guys. Um, and looks like we may be getting them back on right now. And um, so we have a couple more minutes to ask them some questions. Um, we I'm back. Will. Yay! Hey, Patty. sorry, we had cutest overload, so system had to shut down. Oh shoot. Um, <laughs> well, people still were sending their questions, so if you have a, a couple minutes, we would sure. love to uh, shoot them over to you. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned Lou before, and someone wanted to know how Lou came to the aquarium. Lou is actually a really great. Um, that's a great question, and he's a great example of what conservation can do for this species. Great question, and he's a great example of what conservation can do for this species. So he found on the coast of California, um, actually underneath a kelp bed on a beach. And uh, at the age he was at, which was about six months of age, he should have been close to about 40 pounds. Unfortunately, he um, was missing one eye, and he also didn't have his full coat of fur, like you can see with Katovi. And so it seemed like he just wasn't able to fend for himself. So he was. 13 pounds instead of 40 and so he was able to be rehabbed at a stranding facility on the coast of California and then needed to find a home and we were thrilled to be that place for him. And <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's been a rough go of it with technical difficulties, you guys, but we'll, we'll keep trying. Um, we are really happy for your questions. I know we got a question from Carl on Google Plus and you want to know how many fur seals we have at the aquarium. Um, I can tell you that we have um, Ursula, her mom, and Kit is her daughter, Flaherty. Uh, Isaac is our big male that we have, and Roxy. And um, the, the trainers know them all re really well, and so they can talk about their individual personalities. Uh, and Lou, she was just talking about. Um, and we also have other marine mammals here at the aquarium. We have uh, Atlantic harbor seals and uh, California sea lions here at the aquarium. So um, if you're ever in the area, we'd love for you to, to pop by. And it's really interesting to talk about the different um, shapes of these seals. They're all marine mammals, but they all look very different. So um, we're, we're going to keep trying with the... Uh, with the connection behind the scenes with Kit. Um, but we're loving the questions that you got. And as I mentioned before, if you if we don't get to your questions because we're not able to connect with Patty and Kit behind the scenes, um, don't still send us your questions and we'll cover them in a future blog. Uh, the trainer's blog is trainers.neaq.org. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, Tumblr, uh, Google Plus, and a, a lot of other social networks. So we're really excited to get connected with you guys. Um, 
and keep you up to date on Kit and her growing up. Um, <laughs> trying to do some finagling behind the scenes here, see if we can get that connection going. <laughs> Our friends at Seattle Aquarium were enjoying watching Kit blowing bubbles, and um, it is really cool to watch that kind of stuff behind the scenes, and that's what's so great about having the blog and uh, being able to post videos and pictures of that kind of stuff, because Patty mentioned that it's going to be a couple months before Kit is able to go on exhibit with her dad and mom and uh, big brother, because they, she needs time to get bigger and learn how to swim and start eating fish. Like, that's the... Uh, what the trainers use as a benchmark to see whether they're ready to go on exhibit. Um, and I know that we've had questions about what kind of food that they're eating, uh, what kind of fish they eat, and how much they, fish they eat, but we'll uh, be sure to cover all that that was not covered by Patty. We'll be able to put that in a, a future blog. So um, thanks for your patience, everyone. We'll see if... Uh, we'll, I'm going to give it one last try. Thanks for bearing with us. I'm going to see if I can get some pictures up of the pups for anyone who's still able to, to be with us. We're really sorry that we're not able to get you the behind-the-scenes video that um, we want. We're having some technical difficulties, but um, I'm going to see if I can get some pictures up of the pup that uh, we've been loving. She's just been such a photogenic little, little gen. So um, let me see if I can get these pictures for you guys. Um, I'll see if I can show you just a couple, and then I think, unfortunately, that we're we're gonna have to sign off. Oh. All right, you guys. I'm really sorry about this. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to sign off. Um, thanks for joining us, and be sure to tune into the. Uh, Tune into the trainers blog at trainers.neq.org, and we will uh, do our best to answer those questions that you had. Thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>